This video was sponsored by Datacamp. More on that later. Walking with Dinosaurs, everybody's favorite dinosaur documentary. Despite being over 20 years old and being outdated in terms of a documentary centered around dinosaurs in a non-fictional way, these six episodes alone have garnered so much success and a huge fan base. And it's really no surprise when you see the amount of effort and care put into making the documentary look the way it is. The overall quality of the show is just great, with realistic looking dinosaurs made with a combination of computer animations and practical effects, perfectly chosen locations for filming, and a memorable score, the show's overall quality is just amazing. I mean, it really was a revolutionary piece of paleo media setting the bar for all dinosaur documentaries that, in my opinion, is still yet to be passed. Sure, there have been some great series out there and ones that probably come close to something like Walking with Dinosaurs, but it's really hard to beat perfection. Okay, obviously Walking with Dinosaurs isn't perfect, especially now with its handful of outdated depictions and information on dinosaurs, not to mention all of the things that they got wrong from the start that they purposely kept in for the sake of storytelling. But this doesn't mean it's a bad show at all. It's still a very good show in other regards, and as a result, it's managed to keep its image up even to this day, as it's seen as most people's favorite dinosaur documentary, including myself. And the show itself did so well that it would lead to several more sequels, spin-offs, specials, a live show, and even a whole feature film. But we don't talk about that last one. Of all of these projects derived from the original, there is one notable one that simply cannot go unmentioned. The Ballad of Big Al. The Ballad of Big Al was a 30-minute Walking with Dinosaurs spin-off based around an actual Allosaurus specimen that was discovered in 1991 and was named Big Al. Despite its name, Big Al wasn't actually a full-grown Allosaurus, but rather a sub-adult, who gets this name regardless due to the other important factors its discovery contributes to paleontology. The Big Al specimen is 95% complete and is so well-preserved it shows clear signs of broken bones and infections that this animal had to deal with when it was alive that would lead to his eventual death. Discoveries like this tell us more about the specimen's life, and what these remains were telling us about Big Al is that he didn't live the easiest life, especially in the condition he was in right before his death. And the Ballad of Big Al was created to shed a little more light on the possible scenario this dinosaur went through that led him to this condition and die at an early age. As interesting as this spin-off is, and as much as I love talking about it and its background, it's not the main focus of this video, but rather what this spin-off would spawn. To coincide with the release of The Ballad of Big Al, which would first air in the UK on Christmas of 2000, an online role-playing game revolved around the spin-off would be available for free on the official BBC website. The game was simply referred to as the Big Al game because you would take the role as Big Al and try your best to survive in the brutal world of the late Jurassic period. The site even promoted the game with these pretty neat banners. Fancy a scorpion for tea? Play the Big Al game and stay alive in the late Jurassic. Do you attack stegosaurs or steer well clear? Be Big Al today. Make sure your lunch doesn't eat you. Test your skills in the Big Al game. Choose between a snake and a frog for your tea in the Big Al game. The game itself had a very simple build and a very simple objective, don't die. But that was much easier said than done, at least according to the many people who played this game when it initially came out. Looking through the community, it's obvious that this game left a rather positive impression on people. But given from the responses of the more recent posts about it via YouTube videos, one of the main aspects of the game that people have pointed out the most was the overall difficulty. Despite the game's simplicity, according to some of the comments on these posts, people would spend hours playing this game. Partly due to how fun it was, but mainly due to the fact that it was a hard game to beat because everything wanted to kill you. But in the end, the game was loved by many and would remain on BBC's official website. For about 11 years, then it was unfortunately taken down by BBC. Allosaurus had never seen such bullshit before. You see, the BBC went on a cleaning spree on their website, purging and taking down whatever games and programs that were deemed as less popular. And for being around as long as it had, it's not too much of a surprise that the Big Al game was one of those programs that would get taken down, as its popularity was considered to be on the decline. On top of this, a new dinosaur documentary had been released in 2011 on the BBC channel called Planet Dinosaur. Just like what they did with the Big Al special, BBC decided to release a Planet Dinosaur game for their official site to coincide with the release of the Planet Dinosaur documentary. The Big Al game would be replaced by the Planet Dinosaur game, and as a result, it would actually 
actually be lost to media for a while. Because the game was taken down and wasn't saved anywhere, it would be nothing more than a memory for a lot of people. You can just imagine the disappointment of all of those who just randomly remembered a Walking with Dinosaurs game that they used to play in the early to mid 2000s and try to look it up again on the BBC website only to find a different dinosaur game in its place. Obviously fans of the game weren't too happy with this decision, but it seems that for the most part people who are not happy with this decision only really took it as far as writing disappointed comments about it on various posts scattered around the internet. It wouldn't be until about six years later in 2017 someone by the name of Cam Park would actually take things a step further and create a petition on change.org to try and get as many signatures as possible in the hopes of getting BBC to release their game to the public. The description of the petition states, As a child, this game was the world to me. Today, all I want is to play this simple Flash game once more. It would require little to no effort to make available considering it has been archived and would make a lot of people, myself included, very happy. For this reason, I hope to gather as much support as possible using this platform and maybe even make this wonderful piece of simple software available once more. This person's first post was about five years ago and they claimed that they sent a formal complaint to the BBC about the game and they apparently got a response back from them. In a follow-up post, Cam talked about how the BBC essentially brushed off their complaint and they copy-pasted the email response they got from them. And the email reads, I understand you are unhappy with the removal of the game Big Al from the BBC Science and Nature website. I am sorry to hear that you are disappointed with its removal. The Big Al game has been archived and will no longer be available. We are constantly trying to keep our online features fresh, and updating games like this is a part of that. We also have to be wary of Space Online, as this allows us to create new content. However, at the end of the email, they also state that they would send this response to the team responsible for the game so that they can at least hear the feedback, much to Cam's dismay. A couple of months after that post, there would be a follow-up with Cam stating that they would be sending out a second formal complaint, this time mentioning the petition that they made for this game, which at that point had had around 95 signatures. In the very last post Cam would make on here, made just over a week from the previous one, they would express their disappointment as the BBC sent them yet another response, basically saying the same thing they said in the first response, but at least making note of the petition. Despite their disappointment, Cam wanted to wait and see how much more support they can get with this petition and continue the fight to get the Big Al game back from there. However, it didn't seem like much came from this, as this was their last post. And since the start, the petition had gained 765 total supporters. But as it turns out, it wouldn't really be necessary to continue this battle with BBC. Because in 2018, a remake of the game would actually surface that was created by someone named Jennifer Edwards. Edwards has a whole page dedicated to her work which is primarily made up of her independent video game projects. According to the About section on her site, she's a UK based developer who's done all sorts of programming related work and is currently a full time Unity developer who creates mobile games. Her knowledge around programming lies specifically with C Sharp, SQL, PL slash SQL, Unity, and Visual Studio. But she does mention that she's always looking to expand her technical knowledge. And hey, expanding your knowledge in the programming and data the world is never a bad idea, but one of the issues that people may have is looking where to start. And luckily, I may have a possible solution for that through an online program known as DataCamp. What's that? You don't know what DataCamp is? Well, they're the people that so generously sponsored today's video. For those of you that don't know what DataCamp is, it's an online learning program that offers over 350 different courses dedicated to teaching you more about data science and helping you develop your data skills. DataCamp offers courses on Python, SQL, R, they also have non-coding classes like machine learning, data engineering, data science, and so on. Now I'll be honest, I know next to nothing about programming and coding and data science, but that's the beauty of data camp and what I really love about it. You don't need to worry about what level of skill or knowledge you have when going into this because data camp gives everyone, whether you're a beginner or a pro, a chance to further grow their knowledge in a convenient and easy way. Personally, the course that interested me the most was Python. I have always heard of it, but never actually knew how it worked. And even after taking the beginner's courses on it, it makes me feel like I have a decent grasp at what it is and how it functions. But chances are, if you're new to data camp, you probably don't know where to start. Luckily, they have several assessments available, one of which you can take for free and even get a personalized learning recommendation. That way you can get a grasp at what you would do the best in and where you should start. And really, there's just so much more to check out on the site. The best thing for you to do if you're 
you're interested is to just take the time to check it out and explore it for yourself. And you can do so using my link in the description below. Clicking on it will give you the first chapter of any Datacam course for free. So if you're an aspiring programmer or just someone wanting to find something new to do, apply yourself and sign up for Datacam today and obtain the skills needed to make yourself data fluent. Again, my link for this is in the description below, and thank you so much for Datacamp for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Anyways, going back to the video, Edwards would remake the game from the ground up literally only using screenshots and forum posts, which at that point was the only part of the game that actually existed. Now, this wasn't an impossible task since the game was 2D and was probably easier to recreate than a traditional 3D game, but there were no doubt some obstacles along the way. She states in a post on her website, I had to make some minor assumptions about the gameplay and had to make my own artwork for most of the map grid, but otherwise it's as faithful to the original as possible. And looking at the recreation, it does look pretty close to what the original game looked like. And for a little while, it would seem that this would be the closest we would ever get to the Big Al game. That is until one day, someone by the name of Alex Freeman would stumble upon Edwards' remake. For those of you that don't know, Freeman was the scientific researcher and designer for the original game, and the fact that she came across this remake was big. And this would lead to a massive breakthrough for those that were still waiting for the release of this original game, because due to her generosity, Freeman would provide Edwards with the necessary assets and the original source code for her to create a direct port of the game. And in 2020, we would finally have the closest version of the original Big Al game for free and that's playable at any time, whether you want to download it for yourself or play it in browser on Edwards' official website. Without the dedicated work that Edwards put into making the game look as accurate as possible, and without the generosity of Freeman giving the assets of the game to Edwards, we would have never really gotten this game back. And Edwards' version of the game that she remade before creating the direct port of it is also still available on her site as well. And comparing her remake to the ported version that she would also work on, you can see that she wasn't too far off. Yeah, the newest version is definitely cleaner and runs slightly better than her remake, regardless the effort is still there and the game is still fun despite its minor issues. And to describe the game for those of you that haven't played it before, the game is centered around Big Al, who you play as, and it provides an interface that contains a grid which is supposed to represent the world you're supposed to explore. Just like in the original special, the game follows Big Al's life, so you start out the game as a baby and you grow throughout the game by eating other animals while also maintaining your energy and fitness levels. The game starts by asking you if you want the care of your mother or if you want to venture out into the world alone. If you want the care of your mother, she'll protect you when you're close to her, but if you wander too far for too long, she may forget about you and try to eat you if you return. You control Big Al with your arrow keys or your ASDWX keys leading him in whatever direction you want to go in. Each square on the grid represents a different area and that area will have different creatures that could either be used as a food source or seen as one of your enemies. If there are enemies in the area and you stick around for too long, you run the risk of getting killed by them. There are creatures as small as dragonflies and centipedes that you can use as food sources and some as large as Diplodocus, Stegosaurus, and even other adult Allosauruses that can destroy you if you're not careful. But when you're little, the worst enemies are things like Ornitholestes and Othnelia. But as you get older, you're able to overpower these dinosaurs and use them as food sources as well. The grid also has different environments that consist of different animals. Some aspects of the environments can kill you as well, especially if you're too little, like getting swept away by the river. Unlike the show, you're able to grow to become a fully grown adult Allosaurus, and once you do, the only thing left to do is to try to get as high of a score as you can. There's no actual ending to the game. The overall goal is to see how far you can get before you eventually die. Which I guess is to be expected since it's just a simple flash game. For me though, it's not a true win unless you venture through every square on the grid and encounter every dinosaur and animal species in the game on top of reaching adulthood. But that may just be me overcomplicating things for myself. Overall, this game and its backstory definitely show the greater side of this community and finally provides an example of a piece of lost media being found, which doesn't always happen. Yeah, technically the original game still hasn't been released by BBC, but with the assets provided by the very person who worked on the original game, I'd say this is enough to call it found. But what do you guys think? Have you played the original game before? I'm actually genuinely curious because I'm also wondering if this remake holds up well to the original game. So if you're one of those people that got a chance to play the original game before it was shut down in 2011 and you played the newest remake to it made by Jennifer Edwards, let me know in the comments down below if it held well. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to thank you guys real quick for your patience, <laughs> for waiting for this video to get out. I know that it's been a little bit, but like I said in the community post a little while back, uh, school started for me and because of that content is gonna slow down a little bit plus I have a bunch of other things kind of going on right now in terms of content um, I'm trying to figure out a couple of things I don't want to say too much because it reveals too much about future projects and I don't like spoiling anything for you guys but one thing I will say is that obviously uh, Jurassic World Dominion trailer is out and now I have to make a video on that because well obviously I'm a dinosaur youtuber every dinosaur youtuber has to make a video on something like this when it comes out you know otherwise you're essentially breaking the law I mean <laughs> I don't make up the rules here guys I mean I, I'm, I'm a dinosaur youtuber I'm obligated to cover uh, the new Jurassic World Dominion trailer to some extent so expect something expect a video on that on the second channel at some point maybe this weekend I don't know um, but it's it's gonna happen I'm gonna record it after I'm recording this yeah but anyways just a lot of things that have interfered with my schedule a little bit when it comes to videos but um, I'm hoping to get back into it a little bit more. I'm trying to figure things out right now. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you so much to Datacamp for sponsoring it. Uh, this is my first sponsor, so I'm pretty excited about it. And thank you all for supporting me in my YouTube endeavors. I'm hoping to make 2022 a great year for content, and I think we're off to a pretty good start. So thank you all so much for watching, and please, have a nice day.